two, one. I'm so excited for this one. Okay, let's go. Angles and polygons. So in the previous videos, what I did, we talked about triangles and the connections between interior and exterior angles and what those relationships are. We talked about quadrilaterals, okay, which are four-sided polygons. And then we talked about those interior and exterior relationships. And I will put, I guess, a link, okay, up above if you want to uh, watch. So I'll put one to the triangles, which will link you to the others. So you'll have that. And now what about general polygons? So before I get into talking about the relationships of angles that are interior and exterior, okay, let's talk about a couple of little definitions. So one key definition, and really that's the one that we're going to discuss, <clears throat> is that this polygon, so on the left-hand side that you see, so it has, okay, so let's say it has one, two, three, four, and five. So it has five vertices. It has one, two, three, four, five sides. And it also has one, two, three, four, and five interior angles, right? Now, polygons where all the interior angles are less than 180 degrees. So meaning this angle or this angle or this angle or this angle or this angle. Every angle there has to be less than 180 degrees. Okay, so it has to be less than 100, less than 180 degrees. I'm not saying that when you add them up, okay, it's less. I'm saying that each angle has to be less than 180. If that is true, we call that a convex polygon, convex polygon. I know a little annoying with terminology, but it's important. And that's what the type that we will talk about. And what's the difference? Well, this one right here, for example, is concave. And concave, when you take a polygon, so it is a polygon, so polygon have basically creation of some sides okay, and vertices that are connected by straight lines. But the key thing, notice that in this one, this angle right here at this vertex, and actually this angle also right here, these angles are bigger than 180 degrees. And when they're bigger then, so if there's at least one or more, we call it a concave Okay, a concave polygon. So we're going to concentrate on the convex ones and we'll see what the relationships are. And by the way, so triangles, so clearly convex, right? Because they're closed in it. They have just three sides. Quadrilaterals, so things like squares and rectagons. Uh, sorry, rectagons. Um, I guess that's a new one. Okay, rectangles and rhombus and, and any other, okay, that are four-sided those ones are also convex. So if we know this, okay, if we know that something is convex, can we create relationships with these interior and exterior angles? So first off, I'm going to talk about interior angles here. So interior angles. So in a triangle, so as we had a triangle like this, we said, that the angles added up to 180 degrees, right? That's what we said. And we had basically three of those angles or three sides, right? So that's a triangle. Now for, so let's say something like this. So this isn't gonna work, all right? So if we have something like that, so a quadrilateral, so there's four sides to this. Now, the trick that we used for these, so when you were watching that video, so I said, well, we can divide this into triangles, okay? And in this case, you would have two triangles, one triangle and two triangles. And notice that each triangle is 180 degrees. So if you have two of those triangles, that means the interior angles must add up to 300 and 
60 degrees. Okay, so that must have happened. So something interesting here happens, all right? So we have a triangle, so a triangle is three sides. Okay, a quadrilateral is four sides. Notice it went up by 180. So now the question is, what if we kept going, right? So the next one, so pentagon, so a pentagon, so penta five. So, so that means we have a five-sided figure. So let's say something like this. So let me borrow this right here. I'm going to borrow it, copy, bring it down here. Now I'm going to make it a little smaller and I'm going to clean it up for you. All right. So my question to you here, and this is the trick that, you know, you can use and think about is try to see how many triangles, you know, you can make out of this pentagon. So how many of these triangles? So notice I'm going to take one vertex. I'm going to start dividing it. So notice that's one triangle here. And then I can take the same vertex and then go to the opposite one, that second triangle, and then a third triangle. So I have three triangles in here, right? So I can fit three triangles. But what do we know about triangles and their angles? We know that each triangle is 180 degrees. So wait a minute. So first triangle plus second triangle plus third triangle. If we would add those angles all up, that means that we would have 180 degrees plus 180 degrees plus 180 degrees, right? Because we could fit three of them. So that's for a pentagon. Okay, so that's for a pentagon. Now, a pentagon was five sides. So notice three sides, four sides. Now, for five sides, what we're really doing is we're just saying how many triangles are there? right? And for each triangle, it is 180 degrees and we're adding them up. So if we're going to say, so now 360 was the previous one, right? So 180, 360, and now plus another 180. So that's 460. So that's 540 degrees. That's the interior angle relationship. Now you can do the same thing. So that's pentagon. What about a hexagon? So we have a hexagon right, which is six. So now let's try to draw a hexagon for ourselves. So one side, two, three, okay, four, five, and let's say six. All right, so six sides. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna try to divide it into triangles, all right? You can pick any vertex, any of them. Let's say I'll pick this one, and I'm gonna start dividing it up. So that's one triangle. Notice it's like I'm just connecting the vertices as many as I can on the interior side. So notice I have one, two, three, four. So every time we are basically adding one more triangle. So clearly here, one triangle only. Here we could fit two triangles. Here we have three triangles. Here we have four triangles. So how many? Well, it is four triangles times 180 degrees, right? Because those are the angles inside of those triangles. So now can we figure out an actual pattern here? It looks like we're, so hexagon, so that means heptagon, right? So heptagon, if we kept going, or an octagon and whatever, you can just keep going with these polygons. It looks like every time we add a side, we can fit one more triangle. So notice, so this case, so four times 180, so this would have been 720 degrees. So in general, can we come up with a relationship between the number of angles you have, which really equals the number of sides, so how many sides do you have there? And then what is the relationship in the interior angles? So it turns out, okay, so looking at this, I'm going to go back here. So when you had a triangle, a triangle has three sides. We noticed that the interior angles added up to 180. That was three sides. 
four sides, they add it up to 360. But really, we're just multiplying by triangles, right? We're just multiplying by how many triangles are fitting in and so on. So this number, so this four, right? So this, in this case, there was three of them, one, two, three. So really it was three times 180. And notice, okay, this one was two times 180. Okay, so that's for the quadrilateral. And then one times 180. Okay, that's for the triangle. And so it just keeps increasing by one. Now, if we take a look what the relationship is to the number of sides, well, a hexagon has six sides, right? Okay, a pentagon has five sides. But here, notice that we're not multiplying by six by the number of sides, we're actually multiplying by four, which is the number of sides minus two, because six minus two is four, and now multiplied by 180 gives you the relationship of your interior angles. And now we can test this on the previous ones. So what about a heptagon? Okay, we had three triangles that we could fit in there. Well, how many sides? Five. So five minus two, notice, times 180, indeed, is just three times 180, which is 540. And that's what that would be. And then for a quadrilateral, it was two, right? Well, quadrilateral has four sides. So four minus two is 180. So indeed, it turns out that your interior angles, interior angles, okay, when you add all of them up, the relationship is, now this depends how you write it or your teachers write it, so it is 180 degrees times the number of sides. So this is inside the bracket minus two. That's what you have. And you can test it on an octagon, on a heptagon, a decagon, so 10 sided, whatever it is that you like. So now what about exterior angles, right? What about the exterior angles? Can we find a relationship for those? For triangles, the exterior angles added to 360 degrees. And again, what are exterior angles? So if you take, so if just a reminder, so if we have a triangle, right, and let's say this is angle, and we have angle A, angle B, angle C. So those are interior because they're on the interior of the triangle. Now, if you extend this, this angle right here is called the exterior angle, and you can extend it in two different ways, this way, or you can extend it in this way, all right? So they are identical, all right? So those are exterior angles, and you know I would call them in the previous video, let's say B prime. Here, you know we can have an exterior angle, and this could be A. So what were they? Well, A prime, so the exterior angles, for triangles added to 360 degrees. For quadrilaterals, they were also 360 degrees. What about for these general convex polygons? Can we figure that out? We can. We know, what do we know? We know that interior relationship, so the interior relationship of angles is 180 multiplied by n minus two. All right. Now, what do we know about every single summation of, for example, the interior angle plus the exterior angle? We know that each, because they're supplementary, means that each angle is 180 degrees, right? We know that. So, if we would put you know, B plus B prime, that also is 180 degrees. C plus C prime, also 180 degrees, because they have to be, because they're supplementary angles. And that means, okay, notice that here, all your interior angles plus your exterior angles just equal to 
the number of angles that you have, or in this case, the number of vertices that you have, multiplied by 180 when you add them, right? 180 plus 180 plus 180. So for a triangle, right, we had three. So we had three times 180 because we had three sides or three vertices in here or three angles. So the total was equal to that. And we used exactly the same thing for quadrilaterals. You can do that. Quadrilaterals, there are four vertices or four sides or four interior angles. So what we would have is the total would have been four times 180. So now in order to find out what the exterior angles add up to, then we can say, so since this is the total, this right here is the total. So this is for a triangle. This is for a quadrilateral. Okay, so for a pentagon would have been five times 180. So that's the total number and so on. That is the total. So if you wanna know exterior, what only the exterior is equal to, well, interior is gonna be equal to the total minus the interior angles, minus the interior angles. And notice the total is equal to, so the total right here is just equal to how many sides you have multiplied by 180. So this is number of sides multiplied by 180. That's what it is. And I'm gonna rewrite this kind of in algebraic form, 180n, right? 180 times n. The interior angles, what did they add up to? Well, we know that we just did this, which is 180, 180, n minus two. So your exterior angles should add up to the following. So this is just an algebraic simplification. So let's do that. 180 n, now let's bring this inside of the bracket. So I'm gonna get 180 times n, the negative negative cancels. 180 times two is 360. Notice 180 minus 180, because their like term is gone. And what do you notice about the exterior angles when you add them up? They actually equal to 360 all the time. So we already said this for triangles. We said this for quadrilaterals, but it turns out that it's true for all, all right? So that's what you have in this video. I'm not gonna get into examples per se because I'm gonna do a little mini test, okay, in a future video so that you can test yourself on these triangles, okay, these quadrilaterals and regular convex polygons and definitely take a look at the concave ones as well, all right? Okay, so thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a future video. I hope this was uh, helpful. I love this subject. Okay, bye, cheers.